via email, Alex Jukanovic asks, Hey Adam, I want to ask if you could answer a few questions regarding the police for my senior project, explaining social injustice, specifically about the police. And I do regularly get uh, some emails like this, and I'm always happy to respond and grateful now to be doing a podcast where I get to answer these questions for a broader audience. So, one, what is being done to solve police going out of their jurisdiction? Whew! Well, that's, that's kind of like, what is being done to solve cancer killing you? You know, you don't, you don't solve the problem of cancer killing you. You, you, you. you cure cancer and get rid of the cancer entirely, right? Uh, police going out of their jurisdiction. What is the jurisdiction of police? And this is a, a, a great uh, legal defense championed by Mark Stevens, markstevens.net. And I, I highly recommend anybody who's curious about this looking it up and uh, and being a part of it. Oh so to say, how, what is being done to solve police going out of their jurisdiction? Well, police go out of their... Oh, I'm sorry, Mark Stevens. Um, if, if you are facing any kind of legal challenge, and you go to a, you go to court, you say, can you prove that you have jurisdiction in this case? Uh, they can't. There's literally nothing in government documents that, that, that proves in any case that government has jurisdiction over you as an individual. And this is one of those technicalitarian arguments, which, I, I, you know, there are a lot of different types of technicalitarian arguments in different legal situations where, yes, you are technically correct to say that this is the case legally, but it really doesn't make a difference in the outcome of the case. You can murder someone if you say, hey, prove that you have jurisdiction. The you know, judge is going to say, fuck you, you murdered someone, you're going to jail. But in a, in a traffic case, in a driver's license case, in a zoning case, you know, a lot of these minor things, you can use these arguments to make yourself more of a pain in the ass than you're worth, and government might leave you alone. When you say, do you have jurisdiction here, uh, the government basically has to say, fuck you, we own you, therefore we have jurisdiction. And, and I, I apply this uh, with, with some success in getting us to the point we're at today now with Freedom Farm, uh, where we say, we would prove that you have jurisdiction over my land. I own it. The county says, I own it. If I own it, how do you have jurisdiction over it? They, well, law, well, precedent. Well, none of the law says, therefore, we own this land, and therefore, we have jurisdiction. And government is afraid. They don't want to come out and say that. But to get back to your question, Alex, about the police, they will always be going out of their jurisdiction because they're enforcing laws that are contrary to the national law, natural law. There is no jurisdiction for the police that is a legitimate confinement of them because th their premise is that fuck you we own you we have the right to tell you what you can and cannot put in your own body we have the right to tell you what you can and cannot do with your own land your own property we have the right to tell you what you can and cannot do with your own money and if you if you violate our edicts we are going to send men with guns to arrest you and lock you in a box in a jail cell so what is being done to solve police going out of their jurisdiction? I kind of want to say, well, there's all this great work, and there's activists here doing this, and activists there doing that, and this individual case there, and that individual case there. But the, the real, what is being done to solve police going out of their jurisdiction, the answer is to abolish the concept of government police altogether. To say, no, if you want to be a police officer, you have to do so in a way that is serving people voluntarily, not being paid for with money that was stolen from people, a.k.a. taxation, because taxation is theft. All right, two. How long have you been actively testing government officials, typically police officers? Well, for me, <laughs> I like to think from a very young age, from when I first blew up the boys' bathroom in middle school and in, in eighth grade, uh, I've always been inherently anti-authoritarian, but in terms of my activism, like deliberately testing police officers, you know, I've been a full-time activist for 11 years, and it's, that started with Iraq Veterans Against the War in, in 2007. So uh, during that time, we were doing protests, challenging regulations on protesting, getting arrested in, in you know, relatively petty civil disobedience. So definitely back to, uh, to 11 years. Three, how do you feel about the police not adhering to their oath? <laughs> adhering to their oath to the Constitution. We swear to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all foreign enemy, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, uh, except when those domestic enemies pay us to do evil shit that totally violates the Constitution. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's not adhering to their oath. How do I feel about it? I don't. I don't let my feelings interfere on such issues. 
Four, what's the best solution for us as citizens to limit the police and how they go against the Constitution? Well, there is one uh, general, very effective means of holding police accountability uh, or holding police accountable, and that is recording them. And this is something now, we all have cell phones, know how to use them, record, live stream, whatever the case is, get them on video. And at very least, that is something that, that we can all do in changing the culture that is changing the culture to, to, to hold police accountable. I mean, even today, uh, recording this officer on the strip when he would have said you're not allowed to film in the past, now knowing that I'm filming and I'm surrounded by other people who all have cameras in their pockets capable of live streaming, he's not going to do something really heinous and egregious. What they ended up doing was taking the suspects away to, uh, to a basement of one of the casinos, which is kind of creepy in and of itself. But they didn't try to stop me from filming there on the sidewalk. Number five, any other comments you would like me to include in the social change project? Thank you, Alex Jukanovic. Well, Alex, if you're doing anything in any kind of academic setting to illuminate the situation with police in the United States, you have to really look at them honestly for what they are. The Dalai Lama was once asked, what would you do if you were president? And he said, the first thing I would do would be to call things by their proper names. So maybe a more proper name for police officer would be government law enforcer. And that is someone who uses violence to force the will of politicians on people. A politician being someone who takes bribes and donations from corporate sponsors to pass laws and create policy that serves those sponsors. So a cop, police officer, is a violent agent of corruption. Now, that person might be well-intentioned for themselves, as, as I was when I enlisted in the military and agreed to, to kill for politicians. That person might think that, as an individual, they're having a net positive effect. But there's also the argument to be made that there's no such thing as a good cop. Because even that good cop is perpetuating a system that protects the bad cops, that protects the bad premises of the system. Again, the idea that they own you, that you don't own yourself, they can, they can violate your rights uh, at, at whim. They can tell you uh, what you can and cannot do with your own property, with your own body, with your own money. That's obscene, that's offensive, that's unethical. So what is a cop? It's an unethical person. Even the good ones who think they're doing ethical things. Because they know. They all know that they're part of this evil system. So we want public safety. We want cops. If, if you think of a cop uh, as a non-government agent, as, 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 as a private security agent, or as a, as a community service agent, we want cops to be able to provide public safety services. We just know that they're going to be able to do a much better job when they don't have politicians. Is middleman. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube, and you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.